Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is September the 24th and we're going to take a look again at two more chapters of the Song of Solomon. Um, for the sake of convenience I'm going to be reading from my, um, from my commentary on the passage because it's already been laid out in front of me and I might as well do that. But I will be sharing with you my password for today. It is absolutely beautiful. But let's read together. Today we're reading chapter 4 and 5. We saw yesterday from um, 3 verse 6 to 5 verse 1 that we have the procession of Solomon's court to Jerusalem. In verse 1 to 5 of this chapter, the beloved shepherd boy comes to Solomon's court to rescue his devoted love. He manages to see her and expresses his delight in her again. We see a contrast between his modesty and Solomon's coarse flattery in uh, chapter 6, verse 4 to 10 and 7, 1 to 9. He says, he says to her, you are beautiful. He says it twice. You have eyes within your black hair, beautiful eyes within your black hair. Your black hair is like the goats of Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like the whiteness of the sheep that has just been shorn and washed. They are all pregnant with twins. Your lips are like a scarlet thread and you speak so appropriately. Your forehead is like a pomegranate. Your neck is like the tower David built for his armory. Your breasts are like two young rows. She answers, I will return to you before night time. I will meet you on the mountains of myrrh and the hills of frankincense. He speaks again saying, You are so beautiful, there is no blemish in you. Come away with me to the north, to secret places where they will never where they will never be found. You have conquered my heart with your eyes. I love you more than my daily drink. Your smell is wonderful. Then he speaks adoringly of her lips, her clothes, calling her a secret place, sealed up. He describes her as if she was a secret garden full of fruits. She answers him, asking him to take her away. In chapter 5, verse 1, he says, I am coming for you. Some of the women of Jerusalem encourage her in her love. From verse 2, the daughter speaks to the court ladies of a dream she once had. She said, I lay, I slept, but my mind was awake. And she heard in her dream the voice of her beloved shepherd or the sound of her beloved shepherd. shepherd. Shepherd, she, he was calling to her to the to open the door for him to enter her home. He says, "I am wet. I have taken off my coat. I don't want to put it back again." Um, he says, "I have washed my feet. I don't want to get them dirty again." He put his hand through the hole of the door to lift the latch to come in, and and her love for him moved within her. She rose up to open the door and her hands dropped myrrh onto the handle of the bolt. She said, I opened the door to her beloved shepherd boy, but by the time he had slipped away and was gone. Her heart had been touched by his voice, but now she could not find him. She called out his name, but there was no answer. <clears throat> As she searched for him, the watchman pushed her about and hurt her and took off her veil, a gross insult. He made the women of the city swear to tell her where her beloved one had gone, if she ever found out. She confessed she was lovesick. They asked her what is so special about her shepherd and she answers and she describes him as white but red. Typical of a shepherd exposed to the sun all day, just as David was. His skin was very white, yet sun scorched. She says he is the chief of 10,000 sheep. An, uh, an outstanding shepherd. His head is like fine gold. His hair is bushy and jet black. His eyes are like dove's eyes, deep and black surrounded with white and beautifully set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, like aromatic flowers. 
His lips are like lilies which drop myrrh. His legs are like pillars of marble on sockets of fine gold. He is tall like a cedar. His mouth is sweet and altogether he is lovely. She says, this is what my beloved is like and he is my best friend. And that last part, which I'll read in the authorised version. You see, they say to her, what is thy beloved more than another beloved? And she gives this long explanation. But at the end of it, having described him, she says, and this is my beloved. And this is my friend. What a great, beautiful passage. What a great, he is not just he is not just the one that she loves. He is the one that is her friend. You see, they're not married yet. He often calls her my sister. He doesn't mean that she's actually a sister. He means that she is at the moment a sister in her standing as a woman. He calls her a daughter because she is still unmarried. He calls her, uh, she calls him my beloved and my friend. What a beautiful passage it is. And uh, there we are. That's my um, password for today. I look forward to speaking to you all again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.